Kevin Dillon has got one of the best programs we have out there. He, 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 he teaches more than just combatives. He teaches the spirit. He teaches the soul of the warrior. He's a man I'm honored to call a friend. He's a man that's got one of the most revolutionary, great defensive tactics and combatives class. It's not defensive, it's combatives. But even more important, the fact that Kevin can take and teach it to executives in a lecture framework in a powerful way. He's, he's interesting, he's funny, he's dynamic, he's got style, he's got substance, and he's got something that law enforcement executives and law enforcement trainers need to hear, and he's got tools that will save lives. Takedowns are a need and a must in any law enforcement combative system. And we teach takedowns from the individual and with teams. We teach takedowns from the front position. We teach takedowns from the rear position. All right, because any type of combative engagement is constantly evolving. Different directions, different positions, everybody is moving. So you have to be able to understand and maybe perform a takedown from the front or maybe perform it from the back. The lock-em system for female officers is very effective for us because we have to rely on you know, skeletal manipulation, which the lock-up system is about manipulating the body so that if you strike this part of the body, this is what happens. So when you're manipulating the body with, using different techniques, um, it makes it easier for a female officer to take the suspect onto the ground. As an operations commander and training supervisor, it's essential to have a training program that meets the needs of your officers in the field. A lockup combat fighting system does just that. I can testify to the fact that I've used these techniques and methods in the field. They're dynamic in use while ensuring officer safety and minimizing the least amount of injury to the combatant. Law enforcement, military, security personnel, especially those responsible for arrest and control, or control and restraint, all right, we are equipped with certain weapon systems. Our handguns, sidearms, our OC, our batons, our tasers. We have to understand and be able to integrate from one to the other, not just transition. Many times when people think transition, they drop their weapon system to try to transition. The fight does not stop. You might have to learn to integrate that weapon system at the same time and during a physical encounter. I recently retired after serving almost 27 years in the law enforcement community. Within that time frame, I was involved in multiple live fire incidents, including one incident in which I was shot five times during that particular engagement. With that level of experience, I truly understand and appreciate the true dynamics of the psychological changes that occur to officers when confronted with a deadly force encounter or a violent encounter. The lockup combat system is the only system I have trained in that truly matches the physical tactics to accommodate the officer's psychological changes during times of extreme stress. I have trained in numerous systems over the years, but Kevin Dillon's concepts and combative training is the only system I've witnessed that truly integrates his fighting tactics to achieve optimum results in the worst of situations. Edge weapon assaults. Many times you have to deal with that edge weapon assault right then and there. You can't just drop your weapon system to go to your sidearm. If you have sure enough, uh, enough coverage, concealment, and distance, absolutely. But many times if somebody confronts you with an edge weapon, the only proper or uh, effective countermeasure is to take it right then and there, right from your point of origin. So you can't just totally rely on your sidearm if somebody assaults you with an edge weapon. Another important aspect of the lockup training programs that have yielded success is the environmental training element. When focusing on reality-based training, we attempt to recreate the same physiological responses that would occur in a violent engagement. The other important factor is to recreate the environment in which they are going to perform. First, we train our officers the basic fundamentals of rolling, falling, and fighting in a controlled, matted environment. Once a solid foundation is established, we move our training outside to the environment for which they're going to perform. If the weather does not supply us with suitable conditions, we will recreate multiple environmental conditions that the officers will have to perform in, such as slick surfaces, low light, flashing light, and things of that nature. To show you the true value of environmental training, an officer approached me when we were training in the rain on slick surfaces. He told me that this was just like the conditions one night when he was fighting on the side of the road 
when a man was trying to take his gun and kill him with it. I've been with Kevin Dillon since uh, the late 90s when we implemented this program together. We try to hit every aspect that the uh, administrator would like to see in a program that has to do with hands-on fighting out in the streets. Uh, we discuss everything that would be important to that officer, uh, right from legal aspects all the way down to the hands-on physical. Um, it's, a, it's just an outstanding program and I've been very proud to be associated with it. Uh, I've been training in the martial arts since I was seven years old. I'm in my 30s now. Uh, I've done many major systems. Most of my work's been in uh, ground fighting, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, stuff like that. And immediately what struck me was that this system can take people that have had no combat experience and within days uh, giving them skills and tactics in all levels of fighting. All the techniques are gross motor skills. They don't take a lot of training to learn and they can be done very quickly uh, after minimal training and retained over a long period of time and then used under stress when most other techniques would be forgotten because of complexity and just uh, the techniques need a lot of training to maintain. This system doesn't need that. In 2006, the Accreditation for Law Enforcement Agencies did an on-site assessment of a Connecticut Police Department utilizing the lockup system. The assessment was over a three-year period. In the use of force category, the report stated that the agency has an excellent self-defense training program, which has contributed greatly to their success in low usage of less lethal weapons during this accreditation period. I've been a police officer for seven years and a martial artist for 22 years. I began my career with my traditional martial arts background that wasn't really applicable to police work. I was lucky enough early on in my career to train with Kevin Dillon and learn the lockup system. With my traditional martial arts, I always felt comfortable on my feet in a fight, but I was apprehensive about going to the ground. Through the lockup system, Kevin taught me how to transition to the ground and how to overcome my attacker. I've used the lockup system numerous times in the line of duty and also when I teach new police recruits. But I also focus on what Kevin taught me about not giving up, about that warrior mindset. I teach this at the academy to new recruits and I also focus on it every night when I go to work. Because of this and what lockup has taught me, I know that at the end of my shift, I'm coming home safe. I like to talk about fitting the needs of the employee through differentiated training. Each one of our officers must be trained to fit their particular needs, their particular size structure, their particular capabilities, their particular physical capabilities. So lockup fits the needs of our officers. The officer doesn't fit the needs of lockup. If we take an officer who has not been physically active for 10, 15 years and put him in a combative engagement in a training environment, he's going to get injured. And that's what's been happening. So many times executives are forced to cancel the program because they can't continually afford to lose these officers on workers' comp. What we do is we have to fit the needs of the officers through differentiated training. If you have an officer who has not done anything physically, we establish and start working on team communications. We start displaying how the function or the manipulations work so they have a strong understanding of what goes on. So there's so many components that you have to touch upon before you get physical. And when you do decide to get physical, you do it at moderate levels. You do low, moderate, and high levels depending on the officer's capability. That way all the officers get training in something that no matter what, they have to deal with individuals that are aggressive and violent on the street. It's just part of our profession. And I feel it's part of our profession to make sure that they have the tools required to do so.